This is the countdown to ACC 2011. Now, beginning at the number three spot, I've picked out a New England Journal article that is a randomized study of um, diet and exercise, either neither or both, and looked at both weight loss but overall functional status and found that, interestingly, only the diet groups, either combined with exercise or alone, led to a reduction in weight about 10% after one year, whereas the exercise alone group did not lose weight. But overall functional status, physical strength, gait, uh, and many other metrics of overall function were improved best in the combination of diet and exercise group. And so one could get weight loss with the diet, but then overall uh, balance function with the exercise group. And so something that uh, all of us can uh, pay attention to on an ongoing basis. Now, at the number two spot is the new focused update of the Unstable Angina uh, Non-STEMI Guideline. This is a long-awaited update, and now the 2011 update that follows on a 2009 STEMI and PCI update that tackles the very tricky question of exactly what antithrombotic therapy uh, should be given early on in unstable angina and non-STEMI. There have been a bunch of new classes of drugs and therapies. And so the new guideline now recommends for those managed with an invasive strategy, dual antiplatelet therapy. And that is aspirin and clopidogrel or aspirin and a 2B3A inhibitor if started upstream in the emergency department, or if started at the time of PCI, uh, aspirin plus clopidogrel or prasugrel, or a 2B3A inhibitor. There are uh, many other updates, uh, notably that uh, one should use or could use a higher loading dose of clopidogrel. And then several class 2B recommendations are included that are the weakest uh, recommendations, one of which is for the uh, 600 milligram load and 150 milligrams um, a day for one week that was used in current Oasis 7, uh, and that could be considered as an option. Also a notation that one could consider Prasugrel uh, even before coronary anatomy was defined, although that is uh, noted to be a level of recommendation C for the level of evidence. Well, and at the number one spot is ACC 2011. There'll be a huge number of trials and many interventional trials headlined by the partner uh, trial that will look at the cohort of randomizing uh, patients to transcutaneous aortic valve implantation versus surgery. Uh, long-awaited and will be very interesting to see. There's also the RIVAL trial that looks at radial versus femoral access for uh, catheterization and PCI. And some medical therapy uh, trials, two large ones from Japan looking at calcium blockers. And then also in the field of heart failure and electrophysiology, a study looking at targeting the lead placement to see whether that improves outcomes with CRT. And so uh, stay tuned for all of the late-breaking trials and on Cardiosaurus. We'll have uh, news updates on Cardiosaurus Video News, all the trials, slides, and reporting um, that uh, we'll be bringing you from uh, New Orleans. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.